So folks, today is probably the most important install yet in my van, also the most expensive. It's the installation of my Rixens heater kit. For my van, I opted for hydronic heat, which means a gas furnace heats up glycol, which runs through tubes in the walls and the floors. It also blows hot air into the van without any carbon monoxide poisoning the air. The system is elaborate, but thankfully a company called Rixens sells it all in kits which makes it totally doable for the DIYer like you or me. Rixon itself is very responsive to assistance calls, but I found YouTube to be a scarce source of information for this install, which is why I made this video. I cover everything from plumbing to wiring. But here is the main component right here. This is the Espritbacher petrol furnace that will get mounted under the van. I'll show you what else I got. There are six things you're gonna need to buy. Number one, the hydronic gas furnace kit. You may need diesel, depending on your van. Number two, the engine heat kit. This gives you the parts to grab heat from your engine while you're driving and get hot water on demand. I highly recommend this add-on. Number three, the floor heat kit. You're going to need these parts for your PEX tube throughout the floor. Number four, the double faceplate kit. This is so you can have two hot air vents in your van. I recommend this so you can have one air vent going into the cabin and another keeping your electronics warm. Number five, a 12 volt water pump. For some reason, that engine heat loop does not give you the pump that you need to complete it. Number six, the Rixon thermostat. Again, the hydronic gas furnace kit does not give you a thermostat, which you're going to need to complete the system. I guess Rixon gives you the option to buy your own. I recommend just buying it right here. So you have to do one last trip later. There are a few other things you're gonna need that don't come with the kit. Um, you're gonna need some plumber's tape, some silicone tape, and you're also going to need some radiant floor heat PEX pipe. This is the orange stuff, not the red, not the blue. Make sure you get the orange because it has an oxygen barrier, which will preserve your system for much longer. And the last thing you need, perhaps the most important, is this part from Ford? Um, read that number carefully. This is the adapter that screws onto your auxiliary gas tank that you put the hose in to siphon gas off of it. You can't just plop the hose into it. You can't just tap into a line. You have to remove the gas tank, get this special part from Ford, screw it in, and then you do your attachment through that. Um, you can buy it from Ford.com, and they ship it to your local dealership. That's how I got it. It's like 25 bucks. But what I'm going to start with is what gets mounted under the van. I'm going to try to do all that today. This, folks, is the diagram I'm working off of. One thing I noticed in mounting the bracket that comes with the Rickson set to the actual heater, this hole at the bottom has no threading in it. So I had to go out and buy a tapper, a metric tapper. If you want to buy something, I would go with a metric and the size seems to be the M7. Worked like a charm. Now as for I, where I want the holes to come up through the floor that come from the heater up to the coolant reservoir, you might remember I previously made this kind of box of space underneath the bed that I wasn't gonna use for shelving. The plan was always to use that for all my plumbing manifolds and the stuff that I only need to access rarely. So I measured with tape from the diameter of, well, I'm sorry, the center of the wheel to where I want those holes to be. It's about 35 inches. So on the other side, so this white mark is 35 inches from the center of this tire. That's where I want the holes to come up through the floor. So there is kind of a wall space here. It's not flat, but what I can do is kind of mount the heater right about here. And hopefully when I do that, I'll have a good setup. I was thinking of mounting it the preferred way, which is the water intake and outtake shooting straight up through the center of the van. So I think right now I'm just gonna take a white marker and mark where those holes are gonna be. So the first part of my thing, my heating system is mounted. This is the bracket for the diesel. I used 
three rib nuts, which are reinforced with construction adhesive and thread locker. I used one self-tapping screw only because I couldn't use my rib nut gun due to this thing right here. That is also reinforced with construction adhesive. The entire bracket is also has construction adhesive slathered on the back side. And I'm gonna put a stainless steel shield over the whole assembly, but this thing is rock solid. So the next piece I'm gonna install is the air intake, which is very distinct. It has an air filter on one side, which is where the air comes in. And then this little cut piece here and the other. And it only fits into one of the tubes on the non-watered side. It only fits into that one, so that's obviously where it goes. It comes with a bunch of clamps. You just use one clamp to clamp it on there, and then I'm gonna use some zip ties to secure it to the rest of the vehicle. So I now have my air intake hooked up. My uh, notion towards this project was keeping it as simple as possible, not having to drill anything. So I just use a couple of zip ties, one that goes through these factory holds, holes that secures the intake part nice and tight, and another that zip ties, two zip ties that are kind of bound together. And then it winds around the actual heater itself and keeps the middle part secure and tight. So the third major piece I'm gonna install for this heater project is the exhaust system. For that, we have this exhaust pipe, which connects to that exhaust port on the heater. It comes with three brackets, which I'm pretty sure is enough. A muffler which goes somewhere in there and then this end cap which I guess just gets bracketed on. One thing the kit does not come with is any sort of bracket to attach the muffler to the van so I might have to custom make something. I've gotten my exhaust system all installed and once again I did not have to drill any holes in the vehicle. So I clamped the exhaust system to the diesel port with that clamp. I didn't trust it, so I also added a zip tie which loops through the clamp and loops through this part of the thing just as reinforcement to hold it all together. If you follow the line, um, I used a factory hole right here to run another zip tie to clamp that in. That's really tight. Um, let's see what else I did. Another factory hole here I used to run another zip tie. Right here, I installed a riv nut I did not have to drill out that hole. There was a factory hole just like this one, and I built my own bracket system using a plus nut that I hadn't used as sort of a pedestal and a bolt, and that kind of holds the whole muffler thing securely to the vehicle. It's very important to route the exhaust from your gas or diesel heater away from your van. So with all the heater and in intake and exhaust installed, my next thing I want to do under here is install the fuel pump which is this device which will siphon gas from the gas tank into the heater itself and again I don't want to drill anything so I looked around for factory holes and I found one right here which I have a rib nut that can perfectly fit in there so I'm gonna use that um, I'm gonna attach it like this it needs to be at around a 15 degree angle the input is this side over here, the output is that side, you want it flowing upwards. Otherwise you can get air bubbles trapped in there and it can do damage, I guess. But yeah, once again, I am looking for factory holes in the undercarriage and I am using them. There we have it. My fuel pump is all rigged up. The instructions say it needs to be ang angled at least 15 degrees from the input to where it comes out. I'm pretty sure I have it more than that. I just used that factory hole for a rib nut here and I reinforced it with some zip ties so if for some reason this ever were to fail or this rubber came off, the whole thing would still be attached to the car. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, how it came out. The next step I'm gonna do in this install is one I've been putting off because I'm kind of scared. It's tapping the fuel line that Rickson gives you into the gas tank of the Transit. Thing about the transit is the auxiliary port you tap into is on the top of the tank you have to physically remove the tank drop it down to the ground put in that adapter from ford in the top put in the tube and then reattach it i drove the tank down to around a gallon and a half left which i think is something like i don't know 
16 pounds or something. Um, I'm doing this by myself. I'm gonna try to lower it onto some two by fours. Anyway, I'm a little nervous. It's just six bolts you have to remove. Here goes nothing. Before I lower the tank, I'm gonna try to do a little pre-assembly of the apparatus that goes into the tank. So this is the adapter from Ford, which is basically a cap you put onto the top of the tank. The adapter comes with one ring clamp. Rickson gives you this hose, which is, you can't really tell from here, but it's too tiny to actually adapt onto this end of the Ford piece. So Rickson gives you this, this adapter here, which you put one side into here and the other side into here. Actually, you put the other side into here and then attach it. Anyway, I'm just blabbing. Let me put this together. I'll show you what I mean. I have now pre-assembled all the parts that connect to the pump and the gas tank. This yellow thing is the part that comes from Ford. It came with one ring clamp, ring clamp as well. This connector came with the Rickson kit. It also came with this adapter to get from this wider tube to this thinner tube. Rickson also gave me plenty more clamps. And at the other end of this hose, well, that's the wire, but wherever the hose is, that is what connects to that fuel pump under the car. Now I just have to lower the tank and pop off the cap and replace it with this thing. Now with that pump attached, I'm gonna attach this tube fitting that Rickson gave me from here all the way to the heater. There's a little port right there. You can kind of see it sticking out. I'm just gonna zip tie the whole thing. After installing that tube to the pump, which is a very tight connection, I was concerned about the softness and exposure of this whole rubber tube, so I'm just adding some wire loom to the whole thing. So the pump is all hooked up to the heater, and now the big task, which is removing this gas tank. You can see how the gas tank attaches to the chassis. There's four of these braces you need to remove, just two bolts on either side. The first thing I want to do is just prop it up on both sides. I'm just using some Tom Clancy novels. Um, you can try using a jack. That seemed a little unstable to me. And as I lower it, I'll just pull the books out one by one until I get it down just enough so I can reach around the top of it. So hopefully you guys can see it's kind of cramped up under here. But what I'm going to do is remove these middle braces first. Not the two at the end, but the ones in the middle. And the ratchet size you're going to want to use is whatever this is. I don't know. Just go through your ratchets until you figure it out. Um, I did figure out you want to have goggles down here. Every time I move bolts around under here, dust comes down to my eyes. But, all right, here goes nothing. Oh, these things are tight. Ugh. One thing I noticed removing these braces is that the bolts are different sizes in different places just to make it even more confusing so I'm putting all my braces off to the side in the same orientation as the van and just putting the bolts as a placeholder in their holes just to make sure I put them all back in the right place <coughs> Now for the final brace. Hopefully this thing doesn't come crashing down in my face. This very last brace, which is the front passenger side one, I've run into a problem. A normal ratchet, you can't, you can't turn it at all in here. Um, you need one of those long style ratchets that look like a straw or something, and I don't have one. I can't drive to Home Depot right now because of, because of this whole situation. So folks, I cannot get that front bolt off on the front passenger side. It's just too tight a space and I don't have the right wrench to do it. You need one of those torque wrenches, the things with a long proboscis. So I'm wondering if I even need to remove it. I'm gonna attempt to just start removing some of those books and see if I can reach my hand in there and 
feel out where to uh, attach this thing. It's worth a shot. All right, so I can now actually reach my hand into there. I just can't see anything. I'm wondering if I could put a mirror behind it. So here's my attempt at lighting up the area. Um, I think I see what I need to remove. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a... Yeah, this is really freaking hard to do. So there is a yellow thing that looks exactly what I need to replace it with, which is this thing. I'm assuming that's what gets popped out. I heard you had to kind of pinch it. Yeah, this is actually rather difficult, man. So I finally got the old gas cap off and this was so hard to remove. First of all, you need to unclamp this yellow thing, kind of snap it out um, like that. And then, see these black things? I had to use a pair of needle nose pliers and get the needle nose pliers around this black thing and you have to squeeze it and then you pull it with all your might because there's a pair of internal clamps in there that you wouldn't otherwise even know about anyway time to replace it with a new one so i'm assuming putting the new one in is a lot easier than getting the old one off first this yellow tab you got to unlock it put it down over that straw thingy push it down until it kind of snaps and then snap that yellow thing back in and yeah boom we're good to go finally let me just make sure there's no leaks or anything i'm just gonna suck into this straw oh yeah i taste gas Ugh. so gas tank is firmly reattached here is the hose that comes off that aux auxiliary pump I really only needed like one foot of it to reach the pump. I think I'm gonna give myself a little bit of slack. Um, I don't wanna have loops and stuff cause I feel like that's not good for the flow. But yeah, I'm just gonna cut it, put some wire loom around it and reattach it right here. So here we have it folks. I put some wire loom around that hose. It goes from the fuel port to the pump it's attached with a clamp that Rickson gives you in the system. I use some of the native holes in the Ford to use a zip tie right here to secure it. And I'm proud to say that the most difficult por portion of the whole Rickson install is now completed. Everything under the van except for those two intake outtake ports um, is, is done. So one of the more nerve wracking elements of this <clears throat> Rickson heater install has been done. I drilled a hole through the floor. This is for the intake pipe. I need to drill another one for the outtake pipe and a third hole for the wire loom that will come through. I noticed there's no real good gasket to use for these heater hoses that Rickson gives you. There's just nothing really out there, so I'm kind of inventing my own solution. I got these quirky universal toilet gaskets for like a buck ninety nine from Home Depot. And I noticed they're kind of the right shape. I'm just gonna cut them with scissors and attempt to forge my own gasket. Let's see how it works out. The third and final hole I'm gonna need to drill for this Rickson system is for all the wires that run from underneath. Um, they give you a whole bunch of wires in a wiring harness. And for me, it's just been a process of elimination, figuring, what, figuring out what plugs into where. The fuel pump was pretty self-evident. It only goes in one way. There are these two things that I've discovered go in only one way on the actual heater itself. I'm gonna try to show you how that clips in. Nope, it doesn't clip in that way. It doesn't clip in that way. Let's see, does it clip in? That doesn't clip in. There we go. See, it's just process of elimination, figuring out what clips into where. So this beauty is my plumbing manifold. This connects from the glycol reservoir through a heat exchanger for warming up hot water on demand. These two nozzles go to the hot air blower. This goes down to the heater. This, this also goes down to the heater, I think. Anyway, if you follow the Rickson diagrams, you'll figure it all out. Manifold is now connected, so it's time to test out these 
homemade gaskets I made out of toilet gaskets. So here's where I made a mistake. You actually need to drill a fourth hole through the floor, about a quarter inch in diameter. This is your air vent intake outtake, which runs from the glycol reservoir and needs to vent outside the van. Working with PEX pipe has to be the most challenging thing I've done so far. This stuff is so difficult to work with. It's basically a giant spring. And as you're laying down the pipe, pipe, you can't just, you know, wind it like a hose. You have to do somersaults with your body and be twisting around. Anyway, I finally got my hydronic floor line in, which connects to my Rickson heater system. I'll show you what it looks like. Over here is the main Rickson manifold. One line of the hydronic loop comes from there and the other one comes from there. That one will connect to this orange and that winds all up against this wall here next to my bed. Now the reason I did it against the wall is because I felt at night I'll be sitting against that kind of as a chair or leaning against it. It'd be nice to have a big wall. You can see how the pipe kind of winds. I dug a little channel in my styrofoam there and here's a bender helper. Now if you look closely, my PEX pipe is a half inch, but these bender helpers have a one inch profile. So I wouldn't be able to put my floor layer on top of it. What I'm doing is just letting these helpers sit for about 24 hours until the pipe takes its shape and then I'll remove them. Over here, I kind of loop around there and it goes through that natural channel back to the original Rickson system. Be sure that all your wall panels and floor panels are removable. You're gonna wanna service that PEX pipe. Imagine if it leaks. All the electrical components in the Rickson system attach to this controller. This in turn attaches to your 12 volt DC power source. I could not fit any wire thicker than 12 gauge into this thing. So make sure you keep all your wire runs short and put this in a place you have easy and ready access to. The first wire I'm connecting is this one from the harness. This one is easy enough, it doesn't require any crimping. All you have to do is make sure that the yellow wire lines up with the yellow wire in that. Plug number two, another easy one, no wire stripping required. This is just one of those telephone type connectors. It goes into this jack right here, plugs, let's see pop straight in and the other end I'll show you the other end simply plugs into the back of the Rickson controller boom easy enough two wires down and no problems yet so I'm just going vertically down the nodules in the Rickson control panel plug from the harness we just connected that plug from the control panel just connected that next one is the fan power and ground so i've taken the fan um, wires and just put them in a wire loom power obviously is the red ground is the black it's just a matter of stripping these down and i tried putting ferrules in there but i couldn't find any that fit so i think you just strip the wire and put it right in those green connection boxes on the rickson system can actually be removed insert the wire in them and then pop them back in. It's much easier. So that was a lot easier than expecting. Again, you just strip the end of the wire by about two millimeters, put it in that hole, and then with a skinny flathead um, screwdriver, you screw it down. And I noticed here they actually label on the circuit board itself what these go to, just in case you didn't do all that OCD labeling that I did, although you should still do that. I highly recommend writing what the pins connect to on the top of the Rickson controller like I did. I wish Rickson did that for you. The only pins that weren't straightforward were 4, 5, and 6. One goes to ground, the other two connect to the thermostat. One is constant power, the other is basically a relay, a switch. It only receives power until the thermostat reaches its desired temperature, and then it cuts off. I'll show you how the Rickson controller works. To turn the system on, you basically just tap this power button right here. You don't push too hard or too lightly, just kind of a nice comfortable tap. To increase the heat, you use the up and down controller. You set it down here to the temperature you want your cabin to achieve. It'll get to that point 
and then just keep it at that point. This right here is the temperature right now. Over here is the fan speed. I tend to just keep it down at one because I feel like increasing the fan speed doesn't do anything except waste electricity. Down here, you select how you're operating your system, the source of electricity. Um, I use the furnace because I tapped in the gas tank. You can also wire the Rixon system to run off your house battery if you don't want to use the furnace. I actually never wired it that way. I might do that as a future project. You can also wire it to the engine battery or a third-party battery over here. So inside this rat's nest, you can kind of see how my Rixon controller is laid out. One thing I found useful was to make sure all of the connections into the pins are very secured down. I reinforced it with tape. I found they kind of popped out by themselves just from driving around unless you really secure them down. The fan vents I have underneath here. This one kind of blows into my kitchen area so if I'm standing over the sink it keeps my feet warm. Blows up to my face when my head is on the edge of the bed. I think it's a great spot for it. This one can also blow into the cabin. What I like to do, however, is keep it closed. The hot air kind of backs up into the electronics chamber, the batteries, and keeps all of that stuff warm. I'm in my second winter of using the Rixon system here in the van, folks. I did that for a reason, because there's a lot of bad information out there on YouTube, I know. People put up these tutorial tutorials as they're building their van before they really tested it out yet. And before I post this video, I want to make sure I put it through all of its paces and ran it through at least one season and worked out all the kinks so I only put good information in this video. And I have to say that the Rixon system has been a game changer for me. It's a lifesaver. It works so smoothly. It uses almost no power. It uses almost no fuel. And coming in here when it's below freezing outside into an 80 degrees sauna, taking my shower, working on my laptop. It's the best thing ever. The Rixon Hydronic Heating System, folks. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass to install. It took me about six months to do the whole thing and do it right, but I recommend it so, so much. By the way, how do you like my lights? Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, if you have any questions about your Rixon install, plumbing, wiring, you can, of course, contact Jim Rixon um, or, you know, reach out to me. I can help you out however I can. If you're in the New England area, I might be able to reach, you know, meet up with you too. We'll see. Anyway, folks, I know this was kind of a long video, but there's probably people out there who really needed something like this. So good luck in your build. I'll see you guys next time.